odlično. Uh, mislim da ga možemo da počnemo. I think that we can begin now. I'd like to welcome you all this Saturday noon. Thank you for participating so we can talk about greener local communities. This event is organized as a project communities as a place of hope with the support of GEF and our support from TNGO uh, with Grace on On this project, we're working the second year and we continue working on it next year on the same topic with different activities and researches. We have come to a network of organizations that cooperates on a European level together with the European Foundation. And the research itself meant locating of practices through Europe that were put in a matrix and could have been from different types of transformation from mobility to uh, managing waste. different solutions to problems that uh, cities uh, were faced to, even though those are not a lot, and the huge uh, numbers of, of uh, Europe, but they are places of hope. And together with their citizens, they can work together to just transformation of their communities. Now, as uh, the first speaker, I'd like to present Raul Gomez, our partner from Spain with his organization. They created a video he will present. He couldn't be with us uh, together due to uh, traveling uh, arrangements. He is not in Madrid to be uh, live online, but there is a video from him and then a video from the Spanish partners, but Spanish organization from on the project. Hello everyone. My name is Raul Gomez. <clears throat> I'm the director of Transition Verde, a Spanish foundation, partner of the Green European Foundation. First of all, I apologize for not being live with you, but right now I'm traveling. So I prefer to record this video and I did it yesterday for you. <clears throat> I would like to talk to you a few minutes about one of the projects we are carrying out with the Green European Foundation. And the name of the project is Cities as Places of Hope and, and it's a transnational project. Several foundations from several countries like Spain, Belgium, Netherlands, uh, Turkey, Croatia and of course Macedonia um, are working on this topic and the aim of this project is to inspire cities to be transformative. Uh, how do we do so? Uh, well, well, we do so sharing good practices from different European cities and organizing study trips to the cities. We must bear in mind that, that cities are vital when launching initiatives aimed at reducing the impact on the environment, helping to halt the loss of biodiversity and building resilience to climate change. Uh, this, is so, this is so because European cities are concentrating more and more population and are key points, uh, if not in production, in the consumption of energy, food and everything. Uh, as an example of the work we do, we, we choose uh, we chose a city in Spain, uh, Logroño, which is the capital of La Rioja, famous for the wine, of course, for the wine industry. Uh, we choose this city because of the politics they were doing on environmental issues and uh, to improve the coexistence. Um, due to the pandemic, 
uh, we couldn't organize any kind of study trip, so we decided to make a virtual visit to the city and its most, most outstanding projects. Here now you can see some images of, of the video. We interviewed uh, several people from the city council, including the mayor, but we also wanted to include, of course, um, people and opinions from the civil society and also from uh, corporations. We, we even went a step further and showed experience of happy coexistence between the city and the surrounding rural space. Mm, as, as I mentioned, we couldn't travel to... Well, we, we, we could, but we couldn't invite people to, to visit. Loroño from, from other countries and we, we did this uh, virtual visit. Um, there are two versions of this video, a long one, around 25 minutes, <coughs> and a 5 minutes one. If I'm not wrong, we will take a look to the short version after my words. Um, one thing that uh, we especially like from, from many of the ongoing projects in Logroño is that they are not expensive projects. Uh, they, they are not um, projects that require a large investment in infrastructure, for instance. It's more a matter of political will. And that means that this kind of projects can be copied, can be trans translated, can be uh, implemented in, in, in many, many other cities in, independent, independently on, on the situation in every country. Mm, well, I don't want to steal more minutes from you. Uh, so thank you, everyone. Thanks, of course, uh, Alexander, for inviting me. And I wish you all a very nice talk about the transformative cities. Hasta pronto. Reverend Professor na Instituto za Geografia pri Prirodno Matematičkat Fakultet v Skupja. Professor Biljana Postolska Toševska, professor at the Institute of Geography. She's dealing with socioeconomic geography. She has published a lot of work in textbooks and uh, papers in the country and abroad. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm very glad that we can talk uh, on a topic like this, uh, since these uh, issues are uh, affecting our living in uh, the bigger urban areas. Before saying anything about the passability and mobility that is affecting us in Skopje, it is necessary to give an overture to mention some uh, insight about the growth dynamics and consequences of the population, spatial economic growth of the city. And also to mention the spheres of influence uh, in Skopje, it's uh, the, the national sphere because it's the capital of the city and uh, 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 there are concentrated the, the institutions, the uh, businesses, uh, and there is the regional sphere that uh, that uh, the three surrounding cities that gravitate towards Skopje, Tetovo, Kumanovo and uh, villas that gravitate towards Skopje and their spatial development and economic growth uh, influences the dynamic of uh, the economic force that flows into Skopje. And the third sphere is the influences that the city of Skopje has in the uh, valley of uh, Skopje and the region. And also Skopje has uh, specifics in the spatial and the economic and population growth, but also and the uh, position, the longitudinal placement along the river Varda and the valley nesting that is limiting to it. 
uh, if we don't uh, uh, give more attention to the spatial development, but uh, we can emphasize the situation of the uh, undeveloped extremities uh, and the economical development of uh, the rest of the uh, country. Why I'm saying this? Maybe you've uh, heard, but uh, when you want to uh, show how the uh, uh, economic uh, development in the country is uh, uh, disposed, it says that uh, Macedonia looks like a uh, 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 body with the und underdeveloped limbs. Uh, the head is Skopje and the whole Skopje region and the underdeveloped extremities are the other regions, cities and the rest of the infrastructure, everything that's outside the Skopje. Uh, this is not good because we have uh, economic and demographic polarization that uh, uh, leads to the consequences we have now. Uh, on the other hand, uh, you have a lot, and uh, on the other hand, you have too little, and you, then you give, get the problem of sustainability. Uh, uh, the, the lack of human resources is the problem for economic development, and on the other hand, you have the Skopje region and the city of Skopje, where we have uh, 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 overflown the optimal limits of uh, popul population. Uh, this is not just talk, this is confirmed by numbers. If you see the numbers and the uh, population in 2020 from the state statistical office, uh, you can see that on a uh, only 7.3 percent of the territory of Republic of Macedonia, as much the area of the Skopje region is, uh, lives 30.6 uh, percent of the total estimated population in the country, and this percentage share has increased in recent years. Uh, in 2005, it was 28.8. Uh, in 2010, 29.3. And on the other hand, uh, within the municipalities of Skopje, uh, we have around 26.8% of the total population in the country. Mainly in the Skopje region, uh, we have 87.6% of the total population in the municipalities of the city of Skopje. This is a worrying data. Uh, we have a uh, uh, big uh, imbalance of the influx of population and what follows with it. But the worrying data doesn't stop there. Be because if you uh, analyze the internal uh, uh, migration movements, uh, you see that 43.7% of the total migrations were to the Skopje region, and one third of it is towards the municipalities of the city of Skopje, uh, which means that we're speaking of uh, talking about municipalities Aerodrom, Karpoš, Kisela Voda, and Centar which in the past period were the center of urban uh, development with the project of the government for housing provisions as assistance to young couples with subsidies to solve the uh, housing uh, matters uh, with the project buy a house by an apartment. Uh, I think that we uh, needed to think about the uh, spatial movement and the consequences that it will lead to, but uh, given the fact that we have uh, migration from uh, young uh, population in the re uh, reproductive age, 
uh, shows that uh, the population of Skopje will rise in the following period uh, in a natural way, not only mechanically. This will increase the density of population, which in the Skopje region is 348 inhabitants per square kilometer, which is over four times higher than the average population density in the country. Unfortunately, we don't have this data um, uh, when we analyze municipalities with, with high rise uh, buildings uh, on square meter. But what I, why I'm mentioning this, because this uh, density of population is a reason to think more about the functional mobility when population leans towards comfortable living and the opportunity to pro provide more than one uh, vehicle per family, uh, mainly due to the affordable prices of uh, the old imported cars. But going back, uh, considering the spatial development of the city, uh, it's inevitable to note that the initial uh, foundations for urban development uh, compared to today uh, with the uh, earthquake in 1963, uh, there were possibilities to develop uh, Skopje in an urban modern spatial city, uh, which was uh, was prepared by experts. Uh, with a plan and the uh, uh, city started to develop in the right direction. But after 1990, uh, what was uh, envisioned was changed. And uh, uh, this was followed by a chaotic development, uh, chaotic urban spread out of control, which was uh, uh, extremely inconvenient uh, with the specific uh, topography of the space uh, leads to uh, with the uh, uh, pollution and problems with the environment. Uh, we also have to mention that Skopje has a public transport system which is seriously underdeveloped. Uh, consisting only of buses that do not meet the basic environmental standards. And uh, we have, uh, we have uh, traffic routes that, uh, because of the geological features, uh, the underground traffic routes are not feasible. Um, but also the traffic culture uh, is inadequate and uh, disables uh, the use of bicycles as a main means of transport. But we have to be real. And in the past period, uh, there were a lot of uh, improvements of the uh, traffic possibilities, but uh, that would be the construction of bicycle lanes uh, and the subsidies of the purchase of bicycles, uh, also the possibility to rent, uh, also the promotion of the health benefits uh, the, uh, and the benefits to the environment of the cycling. And uh, that uh, gives opportunity to see bike riders in the traffic more often. But the fact is that so far the city is not uh, connected by bicycle lanes. So we cannot talk about the conditions created for the use of bicycles in all the parts of the city. In order to overcome these problems, the demographic expansions, the cha chaotic uh, uh, expansion of the city and uh, to have a more functional mobility in the daily life, we have to think about other 
solutions. But in order to speak about smart city, we need to see the city as a big Wi-Fi, free Wi-Fi zone. So anyone who has a smartphone can uh, download the apps to follow the bus transportation uh, system to plan the transport. Also the parking at the sens uh, sensors at the parking places to monitor the free parking spaces without un unnecessary uh, circling and congestions and also to consider the taxes on families that have more than one car, also to consider uh, bans on imports on very old cars. Maybe it doesn't uh, sound well because our standard doesn't allow us to buy new cars, but on the other hand, we have to uh, put a stop and have stricter rules and maybe to consider that uh, some zones, uh, some parts of the city will be uh, unavailable for, for traffic or uh, you have a timeline where a period of the day to enter this part of the city. As I mentioned that the, the uh, workforce uh, inflow uh, within the city from other cities, maybe it's good to consider some uh, posts for uh, leaving the cars uh, for, for people uh, coming to work in Skopje so they can uh, they can uh, use the public transport for uh, for their needs uh, while working in the Skopje. When we make these social endeavors, uh, I'm wondering how this um, will be accepted uh, by the community. No matter how unpleasing the statement, it's fact that the local culture uh, in this area is too inclined to stereotypical behavior. Um, procrastinations, uh, suspicions towards changes, and uh, we cannot judge them for it because the experience led them to that behavior. But the fact is that uh, we have to be more persistent, to have more dialogue, to cooperate, to speak publicly, uh, to implement part of the ideas, as I said, to connect the, the, the bike routes throughout the city and more subsidies to find a way to motivate the population to build a different collective uh, thought of the traffic habits. I believe that it will be more acceptable by the young uh, because we, as a society, we are more susceptible to the positive European practices and everything that is positive uh, can be beneficial personally and in the society will have uh, positive values. Thank you, that's all from me. Thank you, Professor. You've detected uh, the problems of Skopje very well as an urban center and all the issues that uh, have been mounting uh, in uh, the past decades. We are aware that Skopje is one of the most polluted cities uh, by the air quality measurements in the world in the past five decades. Uh, it was uh, more favorable for the cars and uh, not so favorable for the citizens, but Skopje was also the city of uh, cyclists before the earthquake. Uh, a high percentage of the population was using the so 
we we are hopeful that this mentality can be reversed and this transformative policies will be discussed further today with our next speaker Milos Sokolic, uh, uh, designer from the Skopje Lab Innovation Center of the city Skopje. We've cooperated on this project already uh, with a video on the possibilities for Skopje as a city of hope. So uh, Milos, please uh, tell us a little bit more about the project Skopje Velo Parking and the uh, possibilities for Skopje and the Skopje cyclists. Thank you, Christian. I hope that you can hear me well. Give me just a moment to share my screen. I hope that you can see the presentation. Hello everyone, I'm Lars Sobek, I'm a designer from uh, SmartUp. Today I'll share some of the project that we're working on and the mission towards we uh, go with this project shortly. About SmartUp, it's a laboratory innovation and a governmental organization working in the fields of education, climate change, and innovation in the public sector. Our work is distinguished by an interdisciplinary approach uh, and including different uh, actors from, while uh, creating solutions and creating the environment where different actors from the system can meet and through a facility the process of creation to address existing social challenges. SmartUp works uh, from 2014, but from 2019 we are um, part of uh, the Southeast Europe Smart uh, Cities. This uh, has a mission to create our cities to be a good place to live, work and visit. This is the first systematic approach to uh, mission-led transformation and it has some goals that we'd like to achieve. Part of them are the quality of fair to brought within the limits recommended by the WHO until 2023 to achieve circularity and net neutral greenhouse gas emissions from economic activities by 2030. And our members uh, to have access to basic welfare needs by 2025. Another goal is to uh, reduce the impact of warming and flooding in our communities. In the past uh, few years, each of the cities worked on different activities, which is the pro uh, from having approach. Each city can uh, choose which activities they will uh, create and manage. And uh, through dialogue this past few years, we uh, came to some conclusions that we hope to transfer our activities to this so we can um, achieve to make our cities good places to live, work and visit. Some things must, uh, must happen, some of them are overcome the traditional uh, political dynamics and uh, moving towards a more comprehensive approach and new models of governments. Another thing is to uh, be willing to experiment with different types of collaboration through communities to build different working relationships. And finally, to identify new models of financing so the required work can be supported and to go uh, towards uh, finishing and achieving these goals. Towards achieving this goal, we worked on many different activities. I'll talk a little bit about each of them. What I'd like to say is that each of these activities uh, work on different uh, topics because uh, the goal itself um, must be worked in different sectors. So 
We work on uh, connecting different projects uh, with a goal to uh, scale and, and reach uh, the higher goals. So some of them were encouraging the um, development of new financial models uh, through a study of economic the conversations with a company from uh, Sweden, and then strategic plans and goals uh, and uh, visions from the citizens. Through synthesis, we created a new portfolio that is still being worked on and it will be available in the future, but concludes a total of 60 projects that could help uh, towards a positive impact, which means an impact that doesn't just bring us uh, financial benefit, but also positive impact towards the environment and the society itself. By this uh, portfolio, we were motivated to think about how to uh, encourage development of uh, things we created, um, a study and worked on mapping the system for the uh, circular economy from 2017 until 2021. That was the first center of innovation in the city of Skopje was created by then. The work of free design of public areas and the project that Christian mentioned, Velostat or Velo Square or strengthening global alternative infrastructure. A bit more details about those. The large uh, investment and started from a study and without going into too many details what the study showed we created five scenarios of how Skopje could uh, go on uh, and transform in the future but how can we get to the zero net emissions is needed a huge investition is needed a lot more than by the the, the current uh, goals are that made us think about how to uh, create uh, those next steps. I also mentioned the impact investment handbook, which we created by the uh, portfolio and the study cases with the goal of how to make the, the country uh, motivate to create uh, a portfolio themselves. The goal is to encourage the citizens and to mobilize all the resources that are already present towards projects that could make financial benefit for them and a positive impact from the aspect of the local environment and the citizens. By the project of circular economy system, we worked on the circular economy in Estonia. We mapped around 82 uh, number of actions that work on this and to organize different number of workshops from different actors from different sectors. What we saw during these workshops was that even though there are some initiatives, the networking of different uh, different initiatives is on a very low level and there is lack of information about the current activities. And with that goal, one of the things that uh, was a result of this project was the, uh, this presentation that you can see here, meaning all the statistics and information we got our basis we transformed into an uh, interactive presentation that you can uh, visit through our website. This interactive platform creates a possibility to share all this information public, but uh, to also touch, uh, get in touch with uh, the actors we didn't get to, to uh, sign up and to uh, also give the details they have and after a while to create 
a form that is needed for a future uh, work towards circular economy. What I forgot to mention is that the handbook is uh, also uh, public online. There is a Macedonian and English version of it, and you can download it from our website. And we come to the project Christian mentioned, which is redesign services. Uh, they're public. These uh, activities were created and managed by Scopi Lab, and the goal of this project was to revitalize parts of the public services with uh, a aim to create more possibilities for the citizens. What is very important was that we included the citizens in each step of the uh, project, which is something that is very important to us in, as an organization, and we try to implement this in every activity we do. The inclusion of the citizens and the final uh, user is uh, something that's very important. During the, the projects, uh, which will use the, the, uh, the result after the finishing of the project, it was in uh, two uh, parts. The first one was the research. And then we created a couple of multidisciplinary teams who uh, found uh, ways how to uh, design those uh, five surfaces, but we had concepts for many more. And finally, the Velostat or Velo Square is part of this initiative, which was created last year. What was especially interesting about uh, Project Velo Square was uh, the way we headed towards the implementation of this. First, we had the research, then we had uh, an open call for regenerating ideas. But what was very interesting, and it's connected to what I've mentioned previously, towards finding solutions was including actors from the public and private sector as well for implementation of the whole project different components from the projects were secured by different actors and that is how we managed to succeed in this the aim of this project other than revitalizing a specific public uh, surface was enriching the infrastructure of the city meaning giving space and surface where uh, bicycles can be parked but also uh, promoting the intermodal way of transport, meaning uh, using uh, more than one way of, of transport to get to one place, meaning we uh, place this well square near the transport center. Uh, so you can go to there by bike and then change the your uh, transport, and that is how you can uh, limit the uh, usage of, of cars. I wouldn't like to uh, to take any more time. I'd like to uh, listen to some of your discussions with these projects. We aim uh, to our uh, mission to create the. Uh, city is the best place to live, work, and travel. But what is needed to uh, fulfill this mission is to include more than, than one actors and create networks and cooperations. So by that, I'd like to invite uh, any of you to join us for any project. So you have my information on the screen. Thank you from me and thank you for the attention. Thank you, Milos, for your presentation. I think that we can finish this uh, formal uh, part. I would include both of you to, uh, to be part of this informal uh, discussion and everyone who uh, watches us at this moment can 
uh, join us. Let's break the ice with one question to the professor Pirina Apostolska Tuszewska. You come from the uh, academic uh, circles. How important is the cooperation between you as an institution, uh, the uh, CSOs and uh, institutions as well? How important is this? for uh, the ideas to become a reality and uh, to transform Skopje, a place of hope. Thank you. Of course, that link must exist because the academic community and the people who constantly work on problems uh, such as this one has have accumulated uh, knowledge and practices that have been done in other parts of the world and all of those things that they are taught about in this study can be implemented. Of course, that the local authorities also must take into consideration their knowledge and uh, be consulted and consult with the academic uh, communities so they can implement those for uh, the welfare of the citizens. I must be honest that there, there are uh, bad decisions uh, created by people with limited knowledge. I wouldn't want to be rude to anyone, but I would uh, give the first place to people who are uh, experts in the fields and that knowledge shouldn't be just on paper, it should be used, it's, it should be we should ignore all the other uh, characteristics, but focus on the knowledge and the expertise of those uh, people. And that's the only way that that link from the academic society institutions and the implementation of uh, of solutions can be successful. That is how I see that. And what I said is that we are witnesses that due to um, not using uh, the knowledge and the expertise, probably that's the skepticism and uh, um, and the doubt we have at our population. So if you want to create something more, we must work today. I hope I wasn't too long in my answer. In that context, one more question to Milos Sokolic. Uh, US Martup cooperate with the local, local authorities, but also with citizens, different initiatives. Uh, specifically with the Velo Park uh, project, how the public participation influenced on uh, getting a good solution. So please share your perspective on this cooperation and how maybe to multiply it in the future in a city like Skopje. Thank you for the question. The project uh, was developed in uh, several stages. Well, we started with an experimental approach, uh, different approaches, uh, how different approaches would uh, uh, function. And we, had, we started with the co-development uh, uh, part, uh, start uh, with the receiving applications uh, and it was uh, very useful because in a way the call for application was developed to be clear for those who will uh, apply but also for uh, the goal of it the purpose of it uh, so we had uh, a lot of participants so when we collected all the ideas uh, and started to implement uh, through different development stages. From the aspect of this participation, public participation, 
there the goal is uh, what will be done to be meeting their needs and uh, to uh, involve their experiences in the development to see where the problems were and facing the uh, citizens' views in development of these projects who was a um, was a possibility to uh, develop an ownership to to the project with which contributes to the uh, sustainability and the uh, uh, continuation of this uh, these spaces uh, to to be consumed and developed. The cooperation is very important, uh, but the, not only the experiences from the citizens, also the experts to to get involved to uh, properly uh, incorporate them in the in the project. The project Velo Park works experimental in a way to scale up the the project. Um, in order to see the interest from the authorities uh, and to find more partners to get involved. Uh, the part participation of the citizen was not a problem. Uh, where the challenge is found sometimes is where the other sectors are reluctant to get involved. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe some of the participants have a question for for our speakers or a comment to the discussions uh, if not we would uh, we would uh, like to uh, share the video that our spanish partners introduced in their address and then we can continue the discussion <laughs> ciudades como Logroño de 150.000 o las ciudades de 200.000 habitantes, 250.000 ciudades con muy buena calidad de vida, mesuradas, equilibradas, a escala humana, densas, compactas, son ciudades donde bueno, se vive bien y así lo reconocen sus propios ciudadanos. Lo que hay que generar es espacios de oportunidades para que la gente pueda marchar pero en un momento dado retornar y pueda seguir configurándose como ciudades donde se pueda vivir bien. ¿no? Eso tiene que ver con esa nueva economía, que es una economía verde, sin duda, es una economía digital, por supuesto, y es una economía de los cuidados. Logroño Calles Abiertas, principalmente, es una estrategia que trata de reequilibrar el espacio público, hacer un, un reparto más justo del espacio que, hasta ahora, en las ciudades ha sido dominado por, por el coche. Entendemos que recoge muchas de las propuestas que se han eh, realizado durante años por colectivos ecologistas, de movilidad, urbanistas, y que eh, ahora los hemos visto puestas en práctica. El escudo verde comprende eh, muchísimas cosas. En principio es eh, la naturalización de la ciudad para lograr que haya una mayor biodiversidad y eh, lograr integrar esa naturaleza que tenemos eh, muy próxima a la ciudad también dentro de la ciudad. ¿no? Eh, lógicamente, el escudo verde, eh, lo que, la frase que solemos decir es verde que crece, verde que protege. Entonces, esto es muy importante, sobre todo, que se ha visto en estos tiempos de, de pandemia. ¿no? Que tenemos la, plaza, la planta de compostaje, que son unos 10.000 metros cuadrados, en la cual se recoge toda la siega y todas las podas que se hacen en nuestros parques y jardines y también lo que puedan aportar los vecinos y vecinas de la ciudad. Y en esa planta de compostaje, después de un proceso digamos, biológico natural, se fermenta, y tras casi unos 10-12 meses, todos esos restos de poda se han convertido en compost. De esa forma que ese compost se mezcla con, con tierra y vuelve a los parques y jardines de Logroño. Por lo cual entendemos que se cierra en lo que es el, el ciclo, ¿no? es decir, que lo que produce la tierra vuelve, vuelve a la tierra. Una iniciativa que busca el arraigo de las personas, porque vivimos en, 
en una sociedad donde una de sus características es el desarraigo, estamos todos conectados a nuestros eh, móviles, a nuestros ordenadores, a nuestras cosas y bueno, pues nosotros consideramos que, que una forma de romper con esa, con esa dinámica es anclarse en el territorio y en este caso pues el territorio es el barrio. El primer proyecto que abordamos fueron los huertos ecológicos municipales de la ciudad de Logroño que no contaba con, con estos servicios y que después de tres años de, de impulso y de perseverancia pues logramos que se pusiera en fase la primera fase, luego ha habido más fases de, de huertos en Logroño, ahora hay 240 250 huertos, si no recuerdo mal, los premios Ecovino, eh, porque estamos en tierra de, de vino y aquí para impulsar la agroecología, la permacultura, pues un primer escalón lógicamente y uno muy importante es la viticultura y la enología, ¿no? por muchos motivos, no solo porque es el cultivo principal de esta región, sino porque además culturalmente, socialmente, económicamente, pues tiene muchísima fuerza ¿no? y es un elemento vertebrador. Todas estas plantaciones vienen con la recuperación de las tierras, de los suelos. Mi abuelo, como he dicho, siempre se ha dedicado al tema del hormigón. Una vez que extraía todo ese material, lo que hacía era, en vez de dejarlo en desuso, lo recuperaba para plantación posterior de viñedo. Hicimos un estudio, un proyecto bastante grande, junto con la Universidad de La Rioja y el Gobierno, en la que eh, por toda La Rioja buscábamos variedades que estaban, eran autóctonas de Rioja, pero que, que desaparecieron. Hacemos el ciclo completo, el, hacemos la producción, la comercialización y, y el consumo, porque muchas de nosotras a la vez somos consumidoras. Entonces hay como un 15% que somos las personas del entorno, luego el 85% baja a la ciudad de Logroño. Un día a la semana bajamos con esta bolsa que es retornable a, a la ciudad, hacemos 100 bolsas y las bajamos a Logroño y allí las familias las retiran. Pues me gustaría un logroño más humano. ¿eh? La imagino como volver a, a la esencia de los pueblos. Se pueden hacer azoteas verdes, se puede cuidar haciendo pasillos biológicos, reforzando el arbolado urbano, utilizando materiales de construcción más amables, reduciendo el tráfico y todo eso yo creo que desde el Ayuntamiento de Logroño ahora mismo se apuesta por eso y, y la verdad es que yo lo aplaudo. So we've seen what our partners from Spain have shown for transformative policies. And I would like to show the video from Professor Stefan Bujarski, uh, Professor of Human Geography at the University of Manchester. Our collaborator will uh, speak about the sustainable practices in traffic, also uh, the pollution, how to reduce it. Jedno prašanje što zabeleža za vreme na ovoj studijski prestoj je deka vo Makedonija se razvije jedna interesna debata. Ta veki podolgo vreme postoji okolo pričinite za aerozagadovanjeto. Posebno ne li ova aferata što se pojavi so mazutot. Mnogo je bitno da ne zaboravimo jeden moment deka tipot na zagadovanje što se pojavova vo во градовите во Македонија и тоа веќе е воспоставено од стручните студии. Најмногу доаѓа од домакинствата и од од сообраќајот. Апсолутно тука нема нема дискусија дека индустријските загадувачи се се мошни значајни и дека користењето на несоодветни горива тој процес уште повеќе го влошува. Но 
во конкретниот случај на Македонија многу битно е што повеќе да се заменуваат цврстите горива и да постојат политики околу таа проблематика, цврстите горива да се заменуваат со други форми на, на загревање во, во зимскиот период и исто така да се стимулира што повеќе одржливите форми на, на превоз пред се јавниот, но и овие други форми пешачење, велосипедски превоз и така натаму. Има доста значени исчекори во Македонија во таа смисла. Многу ја поздравувам кампањата на владата за замена на фосилни горива со, со клима уреди инвертери. Тоа несомнено придонесува значително кон намалувањето на загадувањето и тоа го гледаме, но за уште еден позначен чекор да се да се направи во таа смисла, потребни се уште поамбициозни политики според мене и и се разбира изнаоѓање на решенија кои што користат и обновливи, но и локални извори на енергија и се разбира подобрување на ефикасноста да се намали побарувачката за енергија. Но тука и сите ние треба да бидеме свесни од горењето на, на отпад, горењето дури и на, 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 на сврсто гориво, како и јаглен во градските средини, создава огромни проблеми. Подобрувањето на квалитетот на живот најмногу ќе се осети во тој момент кога ќе преминеме кон поодржливи, масовно ќе преминеме кон поодржливи, кон почисти системи за загреење пред се, како и се разбира поодржливи форми на, на сообраќај. Well, we've seen the two videos. We had the chance to see interesting ideas that we hope with joint efforts and our activities as Association Sunrise and all the partners and everyone who wants to join, we can more easily accomplish in the following period because some uh, some conditions are very difficult to be endured. For the final words, uh, Alexander would like to thank everyone. Uh, interesting, the interesting presentations and the ideas and uh, all the problems that we are aware of, but also uh suggesting solutions i already shared uh, some links in the chat for videos from different countries because within the project as raul mentioned in the beginning uh around seven countries organizations from different countries are a part of the project we all developed one or more videos in which uh, either we locate the problem or offer solution or transformative practices are, are developed and this is exchanged in on european level to change the local policies to implement local measures or change the whole system of functioning uh, like the video from Ghent on mobility. This is an impressive model that is uh, uh, a living, a living uh, situation there. Um, our second video that we are developing for Skopje is uh, also a transformation that we've uh, targeted in our city. It's the Skopje Velo City that's uh, envisioned not by the city of Skopje, but a lot of organizations that follow our project. And we hope that uh, it will be finished uh, in the recent 
period uh, that uh, every new ad administration of the city will will contribute more and the mo mobility in Skopje will will improve and uh, be more pleasant for for the citizens thank you all thank you for the speakers with their for their address and i hope we'll see each other in uh, 2022 i invite you all to join us and contribute to uh, our aspirations uh, to change uh, the situation uh, bye for now Greetings and uh, thank you for the great presentations.